Welcome to CT Expert Insights. When your business needs expert advice on compliance issues, you can count on us. We provide tips, tools, and strategies to help you at every stage of your business's life cycle. Hi, I'm Greg Corumbus. Our guest this week is Sharon Carroll. She is a compliance business consultant for CT Corporation. And our topic this week is entity management. We've talked a lot in recent weeks about a formal business structure, a formal entity, now entity management. And Sharon, thank you very much for being with us. I'm happy to be here. So let's start right with the definition. What is entity management? That's probably the best question where most of our companies do begin is kind of identifying what's entity management to them. And it might be different depending on the kind of company they are. Uh, public companies might have a different definition than private companies. Companies with federal regulations might have other uh, information that they need to track. So I, I like to define it as whatever information becomes the foundation of a particular company. So that will really be driven by the compliance regulations that they have to abide by. What role does it play within an organization? How much of a focus needs does it need to have? I, I think we've seen in the past years with the passage of uh, Dodd-Frank and Sarbanes-Oxley that companies are now finally taking a really hard look at how they're doing it. Um, they might have just relegated it to the minute books, which is their corporate hard copy paper documents. And now they're looking at ways that they can share it amongst other offices and departments. So I think they're now taking it maybe a little bit more seriously that it has to be not just what the current information is, but also a kind of a legacy. What was the history? What was it like a year ago? Who were the officers and directors uh, the last time uh, a merger acquisition or name change occurred? So I think that, that it's gained more importance and they're really taking a look at how they can better management in their day-to-day -day activities. What are many businesses facing when it comes to managing their entity? What are the major challenges? I, I think it would be the uh, age old adage, everybody keeps saying, let's do uh, more with less. So people are adding this into their already busy, hectic schedules, but it still has an importance, but it may not be someone's you know, full-time job. So they're looking to add it to whether it's a, a paralegal's position or a tax manager's position. So it's getting their arms around it. Should they be doing it in Excel? Should they be doing it on a SharePoint or Access database? Or should they be seeking some web-based technology that might be helpful in tracking all of that information? So I think it's defining it and then identifying how they're going to actually track the information, monitor it, make sure that it's accurate and then moving forward, how they might be able to share that and collaborate throughout the organization. Well, like I mentioned before, we've talked about entity quite a bit over the past few weeks. When it comes to aspiring business owners, they hear a lot about the need to establish the entity. How surprised are some to realize that they need to manage it? I think it is a surprise. It probably should come in that handbook when we start forming companies. And I think, um, Many paralegals and attorneys uh, understand that, but I'm not sure that the business owner is aware of that. Uh, they understand they have to have minute books, which are the hard copy documents, but they don't understand how often people are going to request information that's gonna be housed in those hard copy documents. And I think we could all agree, when was the last time uh, we actually held paper? A lot of what we do now is electronic. And because of that, that entity management information needs to be the same. So I've seen some very forthright company owners who are right on it and putting it into technology, but others who may be slow to that point because they didn't realize that they needed that information. And typically in about a year's time when they have to file their first annual report or some other compliance deadline, they're kind of scrambling for that information and then really kind of learn by you know the example of being uh, reactive versus proactive in setting something up. You've talked about this a little bit already, but talk a little bit more about the external requirements that various corporations need to comply with in order to be exactly where they want to be with entity management. Sure, so um, it, it can vary. They could be our basic Secretary of State uh, compliance requirements, uh, which are typically called an annual report. They could be tax requirements with the IRS. 
Uh, they could be regulatory, depending on the type of industry. So the trucking industry, the pharmaceutical industry, all of those will have uh, different types of compliance, uh, whether they're forms or regulations, renewals, licenses, permits. So it is getting an idea of what they're going to have to be filing to stay compliant and what are those data points that are actually going to be called upon to either populate those forms or to report to those agencies. We're talking with Sharon Carroll of CT Corporation. And Sharon, when it comes to business, everything seems to be changing so rapidly now, no matter what aspect of business we're talking about. So what are some new ways that businesses are approaching entity management that might be different than just a few years ago? I would really have to say technology has taken a forefront. I think many companies and even their outside law firms are looking at ways to use technology. So whether they're using just a simple SharePoint collaboration site or even building their own access database, uh, technology has also come out in the forms of uh, kind of set entity management programs, matter management programs. So there's lots out there. And I find that companies now are really doing the research and finding what might be out there so they don't have to recreate the wheel. So they don't have to start from, you know, step one. And I, I think that that's what's important is that there's so many choices out there. They just really need to get out there, do their homework, do a little bit of research, and they can just do that on the internet. Uh, by Googling entity management, and they'll come up with not only vendors, but some great content articles from a number of different associations that can help point them in the right direction. Sharon, when it comes Sharon. to the urgency, the focus that you see, whether it's small businesses, medium businesses, or even large corporations, their intensity on getting this done, how big of a priority is it for them? How well are businesses going after this and making sure they are complying and managing their entity well? You know, I, I guess I see it at all different levels. Um, companies that may have had a problem with compliance, either fallen out of compliance or couldn't find some information. Um, I had a company recently who had to pay an outside law firm to actually go through all of their hard copy documents to find the information that they're looking for. So they may have had to pay a price in either time uh, fees or, or funds uh, that have alerted them to that they might need to get a better way to manage this information or have it available to them. Uh, we also see that in any litigation that a company may be uh, you know, going to court with, they might need to know who were the officers and directors at a specific period in time. So I think we're seeing uh, more of the larger or kind of mid-market companies already becoming very uh, proactive in their approaches. But we'd like to get some of the smaller businesses aware that starting at the very beginning is a great way, step by step. They can certainly grow and build from there. But I think it's just making them aware of the topic and the importance of the information so that they can get kind of a head start before they're, they're too large or they're scrambling for information. And if I'm running a small business and I just come to the conclusion, I know this needs to be done. I'm not the guy to do it. I'm not even sure who to hire to do it. Where do I go for help and, and what type of services do you and, and folks at CT provide? Sure. So there's lots of different uh, companies that are out there in the marketplace. Uh, CT, I think, is unique in the marketplace because we run a number of different services, whether they're transactional. So they might have used us to help form that company. Uh, they may use us as an independent director service. But we also have consultative services. And that's really one of the roles that I play as a business consultant is really coming in and taking a look at what they're doing now and maybe make suggestions of how they could do things better. And it might even be a plan, what they could do by next year, what they could do in the next six months. So we've got a lot of different options. So whether that's just passing along information through our articles and the information we have on our website, or through our service teams that are physically doing some of the transactional work and meeting with the clients day to day. Sharon, terrific advice. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, I appreciate your time and uh, everybody have a great day. Sharon Carroll is a compliance business consultant for CT Corporation. For more information on entity management, please call the phone number or visit the website on your screen.
With 125 years of experience, CT is here to help you at every stage of the business life cycle. 